I just got this Troxxas Lynx e-bike built up and it was a pretty simple process out of the box. Just had to put the front wheel, handlebars, and pedals on and it was ready to go. Okay, I'm going to start with a speed test in each assist level. Uh, number one, we're going about 10. Bump it up to two, see what that takes me to. Looks like about 12, 13, up to three. What's that going to be? It'll be about 15, a little over, 16 maybe. Number four, up to 20. And number five, this should really get me moving pretty quick here. Oh yeah, 25, it's kind of outrunning my pedaling. Oh, up to 28, look at that. Pretty fast little bike right here. And on throttle only, it seems like about 20 is the max. I just wanted to give the light a quick test and it's pretty decent for the road. Lights up the full lane pretty well. Not super bright, but if you're just cruising down the road, it should be enough to get you where you need to go. And the rear light should provide good visibility for the cars behind you. It could definitely be brighter for off-road use, but it might make for a good addition to a helmet mounted light. Well, I just took this bike for a test run to work. I particularly like the fact that I can touch the ground being short. It was a pretty smooth ride overall. I also liked how it was maneuverable and fast. All right, there we go. That was pretty tough, but out in the woods now to see what this thing can do off-road. So I did some riding off camera and the fork completely changed how it works. At first it was really soft, rebounded really fast and topped out pretty harsh. Now it's really slowed down quite a bit. Not sure what happened. I didn't adjust anything. That's just what happened after riding a bit more aggressive and bottoming it out a few times. Here are some tight and twisty trails. See how well it works when you're powering on and off. I did disconnect the rear sensor wire for the brake but I left the front so I can still cut the motor quick if I need to. Got a bit of an obstacle coming out of this part here. Oh my goodness! That was rough. Feels like it survived. Nice berm to berm here. A little bigger berm to berm now. And ending with the jump. Oh no! The handlebars moved back on that one. I did have them pretty tight, I thought, but with this kind of handlebar, there's quite a bit of leverage that goes to that stem. So I guess you gotta keep them tighter than you would expect. Speaking of BMX handlebars, I'm gonna try to turn this dirt section into a bit of a half pipe. Do some BMX tricks. Roll back, uh-oh, lost the chain. Let's try that again, I shifted up one, maybe. That will help keep it on. Oh, got to keep my feet on though. There we go. Now up the skinny. Try to step up those BMX moves with a slider. I don't know how to get out of these. Chain came off on that one, but I had the throttle power out of it. Okay, since it didn't love BMX, gonna try some trials activities. The brakes are not great, but they're decent. Definitely better than the other bigger fat tires. There's just a bit less mass to stop. They're definitely not as good as I would like. Okay, this is probably gonna be too much to ask. I think it'll go. Maybe if I start with a throttle and then pedal. Oh, look at that. Throttle it out up there too. 
I'm a little surprised I made that because of how high the gearing is. Didn't think it would be able to pull me up there, but just had to use the throttle for backup and did the trick. Time to really put that front brake to the test. Two fingers, still pretty weak. <laughs> that is really goofy feeling. Here's a brake and weight test. Oh, slid off the pedal, not quite a 180. Let's see if I can get the full rotation. Coming at ya. Oh. oh man, it is hard to get that weight spinning. Oh yeah, perfect. Not really perfect, but it's pretty tough with the sand, the surface area of the tire. Really didn't want to pivot that well. So you really had to work to get that weight spun around. All right, it was a good time messing around in the woods, but I'm gonna wrap it up here. There were definitely a few things that made it extra challenging, but that's just part of the fun. For the final test, I mounted a 35 pound electric unicycle on the rack here and went for a ride on this to go ride that. And that did introduce quite a bit of flex, so I would not recommend putting anything quite that heavy on it, but it did hold up. To wrap things up, I'm going to mention three good and three bad things that stick out to me. The first is the seat post was not long enough. The bike is a bit small for me at six feet tall. I had to buy a 100 millimeter longer seat post and it actually barely goes tall enough to where I can extend my legs out long enough to put power down comfortably. On the positive side, the frame felt relatively stiff. On a step through design like this, the frames can flex quite a bit when you put power down or when you ride a little more aggressively if they aren't built beefy enough down in this area. And this one is nice and thick. A lot of material down there really strengthened up that frame. A negative is that I was only able to go 19 miles on the first battery charge. That was a mix of riding with a little bit of throttle, some in mode five, some in mode one, a mix of everything, but I was expecting more. So hopefully it continues to improve or figure out how to make it more efficient. The throttle is also a bit strange to use. I've never had one set up for the left thumb. Another good thing is that this bike is more maneuverable than a 26 inch fat tire electric bike. The smaller wheels size and step through allows you to throw it around a little bit easier. It's easier to mount and get off of than a bike with a top tube. So there is some benefits to the smaller size. Probably the biggest downside for me is the fork. It didn't take long for it to completely change its feel. It went from soft to bouncy to very stiff and now it almost feels like it's locked out even though it's not. I can barely get it to move so it doesn't cushion the bumps very well anymore. I did reach out to the company and they thought it was normal. I think there may have been some misunderstanding, miscommunication there because this is not how it should feel. There is already some wear starting to show on the stanchions so it's just not that great quality of a fork. Maybe I got a bad one or maybe I rode it too hard. But now for the best part of the bike, it's fun. The BMX style bars and the small size make you want to throw it around a little bit more than you would a bigger bike. The weight and the build keeps you from throwing it around too much, but you can still do it enough to add some enjoyment to the ride.